Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions – Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education and Love series. In the How and Why I Remain Unloving Q&A presentation, Jesus answers questions from the audience about the material covered in the previous presentation How and Why I Remain Unloving. Recorded on the 6th of March, 2016, in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Okay. Well, now we come to the Q&A on the subject we just discussed, which is how and why I remain in loving. So let's get started. Pat, you would you like to start? <coughs> I'm trying to get hold of this, that choice point. Mm -hmm. um, I can feel a large part of my will is moving toward fear or being unloving. Yeah. There's a tiny bit yeah. that moving toward loving. When you say fear of being unloving. No, toward fear toward or fear. toward being unloving. Oh, right. I'm yeah, gotcha. I yeah. think to me the choice to go to fear is unloving, the choice to go to love or truth is loving yeah yeah <laughs> so i know that i've used my willpower mm -hmm. for 65 years to mm -hmm. push down feelings mm -hmm. which we'll talk about more in a few days time as well okay yeah, yeah. so and uh, somewhere in the the first assistance group when we talked about willpower maybe i need to wait for this yeah but uh, it was as though willpower wasn't a good thing, but isn't there a way it get, can be used here, that I can use willpower to choose love? Well, you see, the choices, this is the conundrum many of you are in, right? The choices are made within your soul, yeah. and they govern your behaviour and actions. They govern what you decide to do in your mind. Do you follow me? Mm -hmm. So as I've always said to you, the mind is like a tool that the soul uses based on the soul's choices. Now, for the majority of you, the soul is choosing to avoid emotion. That's the choice made at the soul level. You follow me? So it, we're, in fact, the choice we're, we're, we're making at the soul level collectively is we're choosing to avoid faith Avoid truth and avoid action and avoid emotion. Those four things that we've talked about just in our previous discussion, right? Now, if that's a choice that is being made at the soul level, for whatever reasons the soul has for making those choices, can you see that the mind either doing the willpower thing and trying to overcome the will of the soul is not going to work because the choice has already been made in the soul right or the mind will support the choice which is what's happening for the majority of us the mind is actually supporting the choice that we're making at the soul level do you follow me so so and when i say supporting it the soul says, avoid, avoid, avoid. And the mind goes, okay, just tell myself a lie. That gets, that's way of avoiding. Do you follow? And so you tell yourself a lie, so you get to avoid something. Or the soul says, avoid, avoid, avoid. And you go, oh, just, just justify the fact that it's done. you just did that. And that's a great way of, again, supporting the avoidance of these particular things. So the big issue, and this is the thing that we, we, we're discussing with you, and, and obviously it's going to be a six-day discussion, so there's more to present to you about these particular issues. But the big problem is what's happening at the soul level, what's happening in your emotional state. That's the things that are driving your, cho your choices and decisions. So everything we've talked about the last day and a half is all about the choices you're making at your emotional level, not the intellectual level. Many of you believe you're not making those choices even intellectually, but you are still engaging them emotionally. So you're still making the same choices. So the question then becomes, well, how do I shift my soul from a state of avoiding 
dealing with emotions, avoiding faith, avoiding truth, avoiding taking action. How do I shift my soul from that particular state? Right? And the very first step is to actually see that we want to be in that state. That's the very first step. And that's why we've raised this issue with you, right? So, so we need to come to see that actually I want to stay in this state of avoidance. Now, as we saw yesterday, we have many belief systems that have been encouraged from our childhood onwards that cause us to believe that there's good reasons for wanting to stay, stay in this state of avoidance. And obviously, we need to address some of these belief systems. So yesterday's conversation was all about the belief systems about love, in particular the belief systems about God's love or, and God that I need to start working on. I need to see that I have them. I need to see that actually the way I view God is much worse than I thought I viewed God. Right? And, and that's what's causing me to, start to, to think that I'm self-reliance is best, that, that I'm better to stay in the state I'm in than I am to change anything. That's, that's a major motivator, right? Because we're avoiding these emotions. So these emotions about God are driving us. Now, now then we discovered, ah, oh, they're not emotions about God, right? Because, because God never treated us that way. So they're actually emotions about the family of origin. And so my avoidance of feeling emotion at the fam about the family of origin, the events that happened in my childhood, my avoidance, my choice to avoid that, is actually causing all these beliefs about God and causing all these beliefs about love. So can you see that one of the best things I could choose to do is to feel emotion about my family of origin. This is what the majority of you are avoiding. You're avoiding that process. If you just allowed yourself to surrender to many of these emotions and many of the events that have happened in your childhood and allowed yourself just to grieve them and, and work your way through them, then, then the process of change would be already naturally occurring. Right? But we don't want to. We don't want to do that. This is a choice we're making at the soul level. And that choice at the soul level has to change. Now, how do you change a choice? By educating yourself about what is right and what is wrong. About educating yourself with the truth. Right? So this is why the truth becomes a very important part of the process of you discovering your emotions. You need to come to actually honour the truth in your life. And that, again, is a choice within the soul it's a choice that needs to happen there now how do you how do you educate yourself to make that choice how do you naturally make that choice you educate your soul to understand the benefits of choosing truth over the pain and suffering of choosing lies right and this is why we've got to have further discussions about those particular subjects because we need, we need at some point to educate our soul to make a different choice and, and our soul is making the choice that it's currently making because it believes that avoidance is the best course of, of action. And, and we are denying a whole heap of things. We're denying pain. We're denying suffering. We're denying all of these things as if we've, ch we've chosen them. We're, we're acting as if we didn't choose them. We're acting as if that some other responsibility is somewhere else even God's responsibility you know God didn't create us perfect that's one of our justifications that these things are happening the reality is we're doing all of that because we want to avoid the process of seeing the cause and effect relationship between choice and outcome choice outcome choice outcome decision outcome decision outcome so 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 one of the best ways to change the will of the soul is to have a very very honest self-examination of the choices you've made and the outcome as being the result of the choices you've made do you understand and this is what i feel most people are not doing 
Most people are thinking that, oh, you know, we have an accident. Oh, you know, it was because that person was in the wrong place at the wrong time and because that person chose to do this and that person chose to do that. And I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time too. And, 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 but there's no asking why was I in the wrong place at the right time? What, what was going on for me? What inside of me created these particular things? We don't see the relationship between cause and effect. We, we are actually removing ourselves from the relationship of cause and effect. And this is, this is the biggest issue, one of the big issues we face to convince our soul to make a different choice. We need to face up to some basic truths. And one is the truth of cause and effect, for example, that everything that we happens to us, which is the effect, has a cause which led to that effect. And that cause happens to be inside of us. Now, now, once we come to terms with that one law, for example, we'll start going, okay, I've got a headache. There's an effect. The cause has to be something happening inside of me. Right? I've got the choice to go and get a headache tablet to suppress the effect, or I could deal with this cause and have the effect permanently erased. Which one am I going to choose? And then I go, oh, today I want to choose to have it taking the tablet. So I go and take the tablet. And the next day, oh, I'll choose taking the tablet. I'll take the tablet. Next day, I take the tablet. Take the. Now, that's going to make a pharmaceutical company better off. But I doubt in the long run whether that's going to make you better off. And at some point, you've got to go, hang on a sec. I'm just taking tablet after tablet after tablet after tablet here. What if I actually instead address the cause? Then I would not have a headache to take a tablet for. That would be far better, wouldn't it? And, and this is a process of educating your soul to make different choices, you see? And that has to happen before you can change something. At the moment, many of you are just going, oh, I know this is the right thing to do, so I'm just going to try to do that. But that's not educating your soul to make a different choice. That's forcing your soul to make a different choice. And your soul is going to have, try to make the choice that it still wants to make still because you've not released the reason why it's making it. And the reason why it's making it is because it believes something different. You actually, in your emotions, believe something different to what you're telling yourself. And that's never going to be a good thing. You're less, it's far better to go, this is how I feel about this subject. It was great yesterday when, you, when I asked you how you felt about God. Because you told me how you felt about God. It was wonderful. That's the start. And then, then I presented to the concept, well, you've never had an interaction with God, so how do you know that God's like this? And you go, oh, I haven't thought about that. Right? That causes your soul to ponder. The feelings inside of you to go, oh, the feelings inside of you start changing then. There's an awareness that grows, feeling-wise awareness, that goes, oh, I'm feeling, I'm, I'm blaming something, somebody for something they've never done. That doesn't feel good if I do that, if somebody does that with me. So obviously it's probably not good if I do it with somebody else, and particularly not good if I do it with God. Um, so, so maybe I can change that. Why do I want to do that? Oh, it's because I want to avoid all my family emotions. That's why I want to do that. You see, a lot of you, what I've noticed a lot of you trying to do is you're trying to feel a group of emotions which are not actually there. Right? And of course, you can't feel emotions that are not there. You've got to actually feel the emotions that are there. And the very first layer of emotion that everyone has to, at some point, choose to feel if they're going to progress is the emotions of avoidance, the ones that drive avoidance. And all of those are belief systems. And the only way you change a false belief is educating yourself with truth. It's the only way you change a false belief. And then, of course, you put it into action, and the action has an outcome that builds your faith. So the next time you're in the same position, you go, ah, oh, last time I did that, and I had that outcome. The time before I did the opposite thing and had a bad outcome, that tells me that the good outcome is going to come from this type of action and I take that action again and lo and behold I get a good outcome now my soul's getting an education right 
Feeling. I've got a feeling-based education. Actually, it feels right to make this decision now rather than the decision to avoid. Does that make sense? So it's going to be a process that begins with your acknowledgement of truth. Educating yourself with truth. Yep. Thank you. That's, and, that, and it's a very good question, Patty. Most of us avoid the education of truth and then expect our soul to change. And so to do, to do that change, we've got to hear the truth and then intellectually decide, I'm going to do the right thing, which many of you have tried. And what's the outcome? It hasn't worked, right? Like Mary and I had this, decision, had this discussion like only probably six months ago. I was just saying, that, babe, look, you're still using willpower rather than your will. The feeling coming from you is you don't want to do this particular thing, so feel that. Feel that you don't want to do those things. If you feel that you don't want to, eventually you'll get to the point of actually feeling differently. Because the more you feel the emotion that's really in your soul and release it, any, and this is a basic truth, if I feel any, all emotion coming out of my soul, if it's an error, it will be felt and afterwards released. Right? If it's a truth, it will be felt and solidified. It's beautiful the way God's made us. Right? Because it, cause it, do you understand that? What I've just said there? It's a very important basic principle that most people don't really grasp until they've felt quite a lot of their emotion, right? But, but what you realise after a while of processing through actual truthful emotions, even the emotions of avoidance are truthful emotions, by processing through these actual truthful emotions, you, you get to see that actually I don't have to worry about whether it's an error or truth because if it's an error and I process it, it'll be gone. It won't be in me anymore. Well, that's a relief. And if it's a truth and I process it, it'll be solidified. It'll remain within me. And, and this like, prevents, prevents me from having to worry about the emotion. <laughs> like, all I know, I know myself now, all I've got to do is feel every actual emotion I have. Isn't that fantastic? I don't have to choose which one's bad and which one's good because anything that's in error will be released from me if I feel it and anything that's truth will be processed and solidified if I feel it. So we go Natalie, Graham and Dave. So if all emotional if you leave your hand up, um, communication with... If all communication with God is emotional... Then what you just said about even if the emotion is error or truthful, I'm actually communicating with God in that process of honouring those feelings. Of course. Yeah, okay. But what does God want you to do? God created you to be an emotional being. So when you honour your emotion, no matter what it is, you're being an emotional being. That's a higher state of truth than not being an emotional being under certain circumstances. Does that make sense? Yeah. It just whether, the, whether the truth is, whatever the truth is of the emotion itself, all you need to do is feel it. Well, it just kind of highlighted a, a moment, uh, I'm recalling <coughs> maybe having a tantrum with God, mm -hmm. not feeling a real emotion, because I'm asking for help while I'm going through this phase and not feeling any real release or any real response back. Mm -hmm. And so... That just kind of clarified for me, well, I'm not in a real emotion when that's happening. No. It's got to be a real emotion from the soul. Not, not a figment of your imagination or a, or a desire to feel a certain thing because you want to avoid something else. Yeah. Many times we do that. Like A lot of our rage, for example, has got nothing to do with real emotion. It's a desire to feel powerful rather than feel the real emotion. Right, so you can process anger for a thousand years, right? And if it's not childhood anger, it's just adult anger that you're choosing to be powerful, feel powerful, you can process it for 2,000 years, 5,000 years. I know people from my first century life who are still in the hells enraged, 
So they've been processing, I mean, like you would call it, processing rage for 2,000 years. Where's it got them? Nowhere. Why? Because that's not the emotion that they need to feel. That's the emotion they want to feel, not what they need to feel. Does thank that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, I've felt for quite some time that if I avoid the consequences of my actions, mm -hmm. that it seems to delay the consequences so that when they do come back, it's harder to figure out what I did to cause it? Yeah, it's very confusing, Graham. It is confusing. If you delay the, uh, delay the acknowledgement of the consequences of actions, and this is why taking firm action is very good, even in a negative direction, because if you take firm action even in a negative direction, even if it's a mistake to do so, I'm not suggesting you do it on purpose, but a if you take firm action in a negative direction as a mistake, you'll get a firm response. And, and, and if you're sensitive to that response in that moment, you'll never do it again. So, and I've got to be... Um, embracing of the consequences of my actions. Yes, very, very important. But that's responsibility, you see. That's about personal responsibility. Yeah. And you have a habit of uh, giving responsibility and giving your will away to people, right? And th there's an addiction in that, and the addiction is that if I give my will away to people, then that makes them responsible for my actions. And so we've got to see that from God's perspective, that's not valid, but, but that's what we want to be valid. So, so, so a lot of times when we're giving our will away, what we're basically telling ourselves is, if I give my will away to that person, then that person will make a decision, and then that person is responsible for what happened to me, because they made the decision. And God's saying to us, no, 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 you gave your will away, and that's your decision. And this is where we've got to also make sure that we take responsibility for our decisions. So that giving of my will away is a, an avoidance, it, it, it causes a delay in the consequences. Yes, and it also causes you then to feel almost a blame of the other person for what they did, which gets you away from seeing the problem that you have, which is giving your will away in the first place. What's the motivating thing? What causes you to be motivated to give your will away? Isn't that fear in the end? Isn't that a fear of some kind where you're afraid of actually making the decision for yourself and so you put the decision in the hands of another person? Or it's a desire not to want to act. Correct. Yeah, well, you're wanting them to act for you. Yeah. 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 And being afraid of the consequences of action. Yeah, I agree. Both things are very hard. Um, you know, they harm our will. They harm our... our, our Choices, but they also then have the subsequent side effects of of confusing us as to the results of the choices we just made. Because the other person made the choice that we put in their hands, and then we have a whole set of consequences because of that choice, which we then have a tendency to want to blame them for, not seeing that actually the real problem was that I put the choice in their hands in the first place. Yeah. Now, is there? You've said in the past that. Um, when we do something unloving, there's an immediate consequence. Always. So is, it's like if I'm sensitive enough, I can feel the immediate consequence without having to wait for the physical consequence. Correct. And in fact, if you feel the immediate consequence to your soul, highly like you, you immediately take some actions to reverse it and therefore often mitigate the long-term effects. Yeah, I've had some things happen sometimes when I've made an action and, and I start to feel jangly or something, you know, and I'm starting to learn that, okay, yep. I need to examine that action that I've just done. Yeah, let's say, uh, g let's give an example of that. Let's say you have a conversation with someone, in the conversation uh, your anger builds up and then you just blurt out the angry thing to them. And then you go, immediately you realise you've done something wrong, you know, it feels bad, and so you say, look, I I'm so sorry, you know, I'm so sorry that I've done that thing and they can feel your sorrow that you've done it and, they, and they, they will then probably not take any further action on what you've done, right? But if you got angry with them and you decided to not admit to it and not take responsibility for the fact that you have and all that kind of stuff, there might be months and months and months where they're plotting a revenge. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And th those are all subsequent effects of the one of the decisions you've made to not just be repentant for the action there and then 
Mm. So there's an example of how long-term consequences can happen because we refuse to take immediate action about the things we've done. And the more sensitive, as you point out, the more sensitive we are emotionally, the more highly likely it is that we'll take immediate action. Yep. Okay. Can, yep. can I ask another question? Sure, you can. Um, I've been pondering this question for a long time about how, why I'm unloving, you know, why I choose to be unloving. Yep. And why I can't choose love, and it seems to me the answer that, that seems to come is because it's of my, it's my anger that anger can't exist. Um, love can't exist where there's anger. Yes, you've learned to be passive with your anger, rather than really feel it. You, you've got a lot of judgment about anger. So, so if we if we examine it from the perspective of what we've been discussing, remember this morning in the presentation I said that that if we judge. Uh, something it prevents us from actually feeling the thing right so you judge the anger which is the decision to remain angry rather than process something else and and in judging the anger you're not feeling it so then you tell yourself you're not angry when you really are now that stops you from feeling that layer of anger and the problem with stopping you feeling that layer of anger is whatever is under the anger won't pop its head out then you know, it, to, to, to for that, for whatever is under the anger, which is usually fear and then some sadness, right, that's underneath that and so forth, the underlying emotions cannot pop their head out, as I would say, into our awareness while we suppress the one above. I have a lot of trouble just acknowledging my anger. Yes. So the, that means you must have a lot of judgment of it, right? Now, God doesn't judge your anger, Graham. So, so that's God only, remember, God's view of a mistake is when you become unloving with it. So suppressing your anger is becoming unloving. It's actually worse to suppress it. You're better off expressing it, but expressing it in situations where, you know, either the people around you know that you've got that anger and you, and you can express it, or w b privately where you can't harm anybody with it. So it, 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 I find that if I... Make a decision. If I realise I've got anger and I make a decision to go off and thump something, um, the delay, it, it's gone. It's, it's, it right. becomes uh, um, not real anymore. You yep. know? I, I have to find some way to feel the anger in the moment. Yes, uh, I agree. And I haven't found uh, the, the solution to that yet. It, I feel that a lot of that, though, is about your resistance still, your judgment of it. Judgment of anger. Yeah. You know, so what I'd be working on first is my judgment. Okay. Yeah, judgment shuts down the process of emotion. So, so judgment is the soul saying, you've got to avoid this emotion, right, because this emotion's really, really bad. It's going to be really bad and people are going to get hurt by it and, and it's going to be really bad to express it and everything. It's going to be bad for you and it's going to be bad. So this is a false belief that that is causing the soul to judge it that way so what we've got to do again is educate like i said to patty educate ourselves that actually know feeling emotion is the way forward yeah yeah like i never saw my mum and dad have an argument no but they never had a good relationship either did they no well <laughs> so. i see that as it was, it's an example of the suppression that went on in my family i agree but we can't blame your family yeah, yeah. They are responsible for creating the emotion within you and even the emotion of judgment they are responsible for creating. Yeah. But we can't blame them now. You're a, How old are you now? Like In your you're 50s? 60, 60, 62. 62. So you're a 62-year-old man who now has a will of his own who can choose to work his way through these particular issues. Yeah. Mm. So the key is to see, yes, they caused this. Yes, there was a huge suppression in my family life, and there was huge suppression in your childhood about feeling any emotion let alone the emotion of anger but anger was like the pinnacle of badness yeah you know, and yet both mum and dad were basically you know angry with each other all the time but never expressing it right and i never saw it no of course you wouldn't because they never expressed it but you would have felt it and this is one reason why you also have a lot of fear like when you're sitting in a powder keg and uh, all it requires is a is a light right before it blows up and so most children can feel they're sitting in the power kit and you are a very sensitive emotional emotionally at your core you're very sensitive emotionally so so you would have felt yourself to be sitting in a powder keg waiting for it to explode and it never did 
And, and that's part of the reason why you're quite shut down emotionally. Does that make sense? Mm. Yep. Thank you. Yep. And we were going up to Dave, weren't we? AJ, I'm confused about um, uh, adult emotion, facade emotion, uh, and the, the emotions that aren't really there, and, and childhood emotions. Is now an appropriate time? Well, you can, I feel, Dave, you're confused about that because you want to choose emotion. You wouldn't be confused about that if you just felt emotion because you'd be able to easily feel which one's which. At the moment, you want to choose things, so you would prefer to have certain feelings other than other feelings. Right? This is the soul's choice to avoid. And you, would, you want the soul to... That's the thing you've got to start with. Like, like a lot of the information I've presented in the past, most of you, unfortunately, have not been ready to hear. And when I say ready, well, again, that's a choice. <laughs> But, but you've chosen to not hear it. And a lot of times you've chosen to not hear it because you don't want to have to go through the process of discovery of it yourself. And your biggest problem, as I, and, and if you think about every conversation I've ever had with you, David, your biggest problem is giving away your will. And now I've said that to you, I don't know how many times, right? You still have not worked on that. You still give away your will, right? Now, in the spirit world, what would happen with you is somebody would come back to you and say, David, you're still giving away your will. And then they go away, and then a year later they come back to you and say, David, you're giving away your will. A year later you come back and they say, David, you're giving away your will. And then ten years later, David, you're giving away your will. They won't tell you anything else other than what they told you <laughs> for 20 years before. Does that make sense? And the reason why they do that is because that's your next most important thing to address. You follow and that's why I've done that with you. Yeah, that's I, your thing to address. Yeah. It's not the intellectual understanding of how emotion works. It's the fact that you want to give away your will. You give away your will to the spirits around you. When, it, when you're in a relationship, you give away your will to the other person. That's what you do. Right? And then you wonder why it doesn't work. Right? And what I'm saying to you is you need to address that spe specific problem of giving away your will. Right? That will actually help you markedly in your life, much more than you, you, you realise at this stage. And what you need to do is go, okay, my soul wants to give away its will. I want to give away my will. I want to. Face that and then ask yourself the question, what does my soul to believe is going to be the outcome of me giving away my will? What, 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 what does it believe? Because obviously these beliefs are false because it's not working. <laughs> right? but, but what does my soul believe is going to happen if I keep giving away my will? That sometime in some future time, some magical person is going to come along and make all the choices and decisions for you and you'll be happy with every one of them. Is that what your soul believes? What is it that your soul believes? You need to discover that. You follow? But you're not going to discover it while you feed the addiction to give away your will. You're not. So that's where I feel you need to focus. Right? And I've felt you need to focus that <laughs> ever since I've met you. The very first email I sent to you was about that and my concern for your very life, remember? In terms of where spirits were leading you with your will. Yeah. That's what you need to focus on, Dave. Don't worry about understanding layer upon layer. You want to know the emotion that causes you to think that giving away your will is good. What is that? If you spent the next year on that, Dave, and made some progress on that, you will definitely make some progress in your life. Yep. Thank you. All right, so if we come to Jenny and across to Glenda on this side. So Jenny down here. <coughs> In the, in the response that you gave to Graham, mm -hmm. when he gives up his will, mm -hmm. I feel my natural response is to jump in and take charge. That's correct. Yep. So when I feel Graham give up his will, my natural response to take charge is the wrong action. Well, what actually, can right I be action? more specific with you? Yes, please. You think that it's because Graham gives up his will that you want to take charge. But one of the reasons why Graham gives up his will is because you want to take charge. And he knows that. And he knows the way to get along with you is to let you take charge. 
He also knows that if he confronts the use of your will in this regard, you'll become enraged. And he is terrified of rage. Do you understand? Yes, He's so terrified of rage, he won't even let himself feel his own, let alone somebody else's, right? So he's terrified of rage, so you do not understand that you actually want him to give up his will. You are a person who wants to take power over other people, Jen. Really? Why are you thinking you're... Why? Of course you do. What happened in your childhood? There was, was power, events that caused you to feel powerless. You've not addressed those events, so now what do you want? You want power over a man. That's what you want. Right? You haven't addressed the, the emotions from the childhood about having a man have power over you. And as a result, you now want power over men. That's what you want. This is why you want power over Graham. Now, pa Graham's problem is that he's, he, he sort of feels like, the person wants power over me, I'll give him power. You know, it's the fastest way to make everything fine. Right? And there's a feeling in him at times of wanting to do that. But, but part of that feeling is he knows that if you don't get to take power over him, you're going to get angry. And you are going to get angry. Because you've got a lot of anger in you about what happened in your childhood. You follow? Yeah. And you're not willing to process that. You want Graham to just do what you want and you think everything will be fixed and it won't. You follow? Yes. Yeah. So what, uh, this is a problem that you have, Jen, and a lot of people who have been abused have the same problem. Because they have not addressed the childhood abuse, they'll have one of two different roads that they will take. One road will be that they'll submit to further abuse throughout their life. Right? The other road, and quite often the same person takes both roads at different times in their life, the other road is find someone that I can have power over and then I feel safe. All right? And that's the road you've taken in the last five or six years. And that's why there's been no change for you. <coughs> Does that make sense? It's a choice to harm others. You, you're making a choice to remain unloving. You think it's a good thing. At the soul level, you think it's great when you've got power over a man. Makes you feel safe, makes you feel secure. Yeah, I'm make, scared. Makes I'm you feel. Scared of men. Uh, well, not only that, he gets to, you know, provide money to you or support to you somehow. You do this with your brother, provide financially in different circumstances. Right? This is what you do. You want the man, because you want the man to pay for what he's done to you. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not the man. This mm -hmm. isn't the man that did it. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Yeah, this is what you're doing. You, and this is how you're using your will. You, you want to do it. And we've told you about this many times, actually, and you, you act like you're shocked. But you want to do it. We've tried to correct even your behaviour about it with many different situations, but it hasn't worked. So you want to. So, again feel that you want to and ask yourself why is it is it actually working does it actually work like no, do you have a great working. relationship with graham no. because of this no of course you don't so stop telling yourself that you're going to get a better relationship with graham if you just try harder doing the same thing you want power over him you want power over men you're very angry with men because of childhood events you're very angry with men your dad and the other guys, you know, you know who I'm talking about. You, you're very angry with men. And so you feel men should pay for the harm they've caused you. But you're unfortunately getting a different man to pay. You follow? I should leave, Graham, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> well, I should because... You know what you just did? You're not taking responsibility now. You're just going, you, oh, the but best if, course if of action is to walk away. No, the best course of action is to be loving. The best course of action isn't to walk away. But obviously I don't know how to get to that place. No, you do know. You just don't want to. 
I'm saying that you keep saying I don't know. You do know. You just want to do the unloving thing. And this is what I'm trying to say to you. You've been talking to me about these things for six years and I've been saying the same thing to you. You want to act this way and you could choose to act differently. And you ask me whether you should leave Graham. No, what you should do is love Graham. To me, that's your only option. Now, you want to take a different road, that's fine. You can take a different road. If you want to leave him, leave him. If that's what you want to do, that's your choice. But at the end of the day, it's not the loving choice. The loving choice would be to love him, no matter what he chooses. That would be the loving choice, wouldn't it? But you don't want to make the loving choice, and you would rather leave than make the loving choice, which is sad. That tells me how strongly you want to hold on to your current error-based thinking. You would prefer to leave the guy that you think you love, right? And I can't see that because you treat him badly. But anyway, you think you love him, but you'd prefer to leave him than come face to face with your own treatment of him. Right? And this is a problem. That is not the way to use your will. You follow? The way to use your will is go, okay, I am here doing this because I want to. The thing that has to change is that I want to do the wrong thing. That's got to change. I've got to find the reason why I want to do the wrong thing. What's the reason why you want to do the wrong thing? Because you've been hurt in your childhood and now you've chosen a man that you know you can hurt back and he's not going to hurt you. That's what you've done. All right? And that's a choice you've made. You can't avoid that. That's a choice you made. You've got to ask yourself why you've made that choice. You've made that choice because you don't want to process through the emotions of your childhood about the abuse. And you've told me over and over that you don't want to do it, that you think it's too big, it's impossible to do. You've told me you have no faith about it. You told me it's impossible to do it. You've told me that you can't be overwhelmed with that emotion. And I'm going, OK, Jen, but I'm telling you, you're taking the wrong road. And that's your choice. You follow? Yep. Of course, Graham's taken the wrong road accepting it from you, but that's his choice, not yours. Alex, thanks. Uh, there was any. Oh, sorry, Glenda's next, sorry. Yep, far away. I'm just wondering are physical symptoms or manifestations any um, indication of whether I'm feeling a real or causal emotion or. For instance, when I start to feel grief, I feel as if I have a bunch of razor blades in my throat and it becomes excessively painful. Yeah, that's the resistance to the grief. Okay. And the same with anger, I just get pains down my arms and in my face. And that's just... the resistance to the anger. Okay, so I just should push through. No, you need to find what your resistance is. Okay. Remember what I said, pushing through is willpower. That's not going to work. Why do you want to resist your anger? What beliefs do you have? Why do you want to resist your grief? What beliefs do you have? That's what you need to discover. The resistance, what, what, why you want to do it. That's the thing that where the soul needs a re-education. You follow? So, so willpowering yourself going, I'm just going to try to cry. No. If, if, if your body is exhibiting sy symptoms while you're crying that actually make it very difficult for you to cry, there's, there's a demonstration that coming from within your own heart is a feeling that you don't want to cry, that you shouldn't be crying. And you've got to find out why. That's your, that's your goal. You follow? Yep. So yep. that's what you do. Yep. You find out why. You find out why your soul wants to avoid because your body and your mind are just like appendages to the soul, aren't they? So they're just going to do, they're just going to do and display whatever, whatever your soul wants. You follow? Thank that's, you. That's the secret. Yeah. So um, that applies to everything. Any question you could ask about resistance whatsoever, every physical feeling that you have in your body that, that is pain is all caused by a resistance. The key is to find out, why do I not want to feel this thing? What, there's got to be something going on as to why I don't want to. And then work through that, work through the, building the desire to want to. You follow? 
Yes, so it's, it's wanting to know where that resistance comes from and why I'm feeling that pain. Correct. Mm. And that might be, uh, you know, mum and dad telling you that if you do, you might get a slap. It might be as simple as that. And those kind of events might come up and then you feel a lot of grief about how you were treated just by, because you wanted to cry. It could be that you now have some set beliefs inside of yourself that crying is weak and all you're trying to do is prevent your own weakness. Right? And that's a decision you're making and you work out, why am I making that decision? Oh, it's because it, when I was young and I cried, everybody made fun of me and everybody ridiculed me and everybody laughed at me and that's why I feel that it's like weak thing to cry. And, and once you start crying about everybody making fun of you and everybody ridiculing you, then those resistance things that happen in your body will disappear. You follow? Yeah, thanks. So yeah, it's just a matter of discovering. Yeah, the body is great because the body's telling you your resistances, right? So it's, it's wonderful. And, and what I've found with my body is that it changes depending on what you're resisting at different times. It's remarkable. Like there's been times when I have terrible, terrible pain in my chest and I could hardly breathe or anything, right? And I've had bad, bad asthma in my life for many years up until I was 30 or so. And then my fear of crying, overcome that, didn't have it anymore ever. I was taking medication, preventers, you know, inhalers, whatever, you know, going to the doctor, getting this and that and whatever before then. So, um, hay fever and a, blo a blocked nose could be related to the pain in the throat when trying to cry. Hay fever and a blocked nose, prevention of tears, always. So it'd be, yeah. If a person suffers from hay fever, it's because they don't want to cry. Thanks. Crying solves a lot of things. <laughs> Alex, no, across to this other side. Um, just after that question, I have a, that's brought up a question for me, because I, I have had a process where I um, really feel like I did release something mm -hmm. and I, I felt like I felt God in that. Um, but it was it was painful and, and it's like the, the pain actually came out, up and out of me. Mm -hmm. So was that my resistance as a, as it was happening? Mm. So it should be a painless experience. Well, physically painless experience. Physically painless. Yeah. I find myself when I'm really in my emotion, f physical pain, I barely, like I don't feel any physical okay. pain in my body. When I'm, as soon as I begin to resist it, bang, immediate, immediate physical pain. So it, the, the emotion leaving is never going to be felt physically? Sorry? If the emotion is leaving, it won't be felt physically. No, if the emotion is leaving without resistance, it will okay. never be felt physically. Okay. But the majority of us have resistance. Yeah. So what does that tell me? That tells me that for the majority of us, when we process emotion, there will be some... There will be some... Okay. <coughs> right. There will be some pain. All right. Thank you. Mm. Because of the resistance. Yeah. Body is a remarkable thing. Great little appendage to the soul to help you understand what's going on emotionally. Far away, Diana. Um, yeah, I guess I have another question with regard, because, you know, neuroscientists are now saying that the, the fascia is connected to the subconscious, which I guess is the soul. Yeah. So with um, therapies like that connect with the fascia, like Bowen or something, that bring up an emotion. Yep. Is so how, do, how does that work? How does the soul... It bypasses the brain's desire to resist. Okay. Mm. And usually the fact that a person's going to get it done is also an indication that they at least want some change. There's a desire. There's a desire. So like on a, on a um, physical level, I'm, I guess I'm just trying to understand how the soul... Is, is, it, is it interwoven energetically throughout our whole... No, it encompasses your two bodies. Okay. So I remember I've drawn a diagram where your soul is actually, your two bodies are included within the circumference, if you like, of your soul. Mm. So you've got, a, you got your spirit body and your physical body, they're in, in, enveloped by your soul, right? Yeah. Okay. So the bodies, there's a whole heap of things that happen to your bodies as a result of the soul's emotion. Yeah. Because I have had another treatment, which was a um, it was a chiropractor, but it was very gentle. It wasn't yep. bone, so she was working on yep. the energetic, um, the spinal cord, really, which my body contorted, and I released like a whole lot of stuff that I don't even know what it was. 
um, was was that effective? Was I doing? Was it? Did it change your life? Well, I, f I feel more relaxed. But yeah, I don't but know if it changed. Um, did it, anything in your life change? You're um, in the same I feel different. So, yeah. There are things. There are times when spirits are attached in certain places, and they okay. can become detached and so forth. But the reality is, unless you've had an emotional experience, yeah, there's not going to be a change in your life. Yeah, there isn't. Yeah, no, it was emotional. It was emotional as well. Yeah, so but it's the emotion that resulted the change in your life. Yeah. Okay. Now them doing their particular manipulation triggered the emotion. Yeah. Yeah. It but it, but it was you experiencing the emotion that causes the change. Yeah. You follow? Yeah. So yeah, for the very first time, for for when I was thirty three, I was very shut down emotionally. So I decided to go and get some body work done. And what I found with that is it did help me bypass the fact that I went there. Obviously, opened up things as well, but but it helped me bypass my mind's desire to shut mm. the whole process down. Does that make sense? Yeah, and that, I think I think that's what. Because oh, I'd been trying but, for so long to... But can I be frank with you about it? Yeah. It's only going to work to a point. Yeah. Because unless you're willing to deal with the soul's, base, soul's emotional resistances, the resistances will remain mm. and therefore establish themselves over what happens. Mm. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 So, so while it helped me get started to feel my emotions, there was a, it got to a point where I could not feel any more emotion doing it mm, and yeah. that told me well now i've hit all my resistances without changing those and now i've had to change those yeah does that make sense yeah, yeah. and you. and no amount of therapy after that point is going to help me yeah you follow yeah because well, it, because it's an internal exercise of the soul's will yeah yeah okay. thank you everything is very dependent on the soul's will so while some physical therapies may actually work at different times it depends greatly upon your soul's willingness to experience the emotion and that's all about whether your soul is avoiding the emotion or not yeah now i've got a um i'm right close to the end so one more question and um, if we come down to mary oh marion down the front sorry <coughs> I've just, I've just got a question about perfection. I've got an ideal perspective of perfection. What's your pers per perspective? What's my perspective yeah. <laughs> um, of perfection? You make it money. It's me. great. You know, it is, it is, there is no negative aspect there. And it's, uh, this is false. This is a false belief. Why do you think it's false? Now, I'm, I was going to ask you the question yeah. about perfection so what's the question you're saying that the soul is perfect no i'm not saying your soul is perfect at all is it perfect when you have got rid of all the crud yes that's the question and you've received god's love to the point of atonement then yes. it's perfect yeah. yes because i got yeah. really excited but, about it being perfect but does it stop growing it's infinite no it's not infinite <laughs> these, are, these are false uh, beliefs associated with new age teachings that you've imbibed yeah. the soul even at the point of at one with god is not infinite and, and you'll become very conscious of that once you're at one with god you realize actually god's infinite and you're definitely finite right soul is not infinite okay yeah this is a false new age belief the soul your soul has the ability to continue expanding as it receives god's love and therefore it has the ability to approach infinity but it, but it is not infinite only god's soul is infinite and in fact it's actually impossible for your soul to be infinite it, it, in your future existence it, you will never be infinite we can change from the mortal to the immortal god. you can which which is about longevity it's not about it's not about infinity yeah yeah no that's does that make awesome. sense it's it's so it's when you become at one with God, you are perfected in love, but you still grow. See, there's this concept that once you're perfect, there's no grow, you know everything and all those kind of... No, none of that's true, right? Perfection from God's perspective is when you've been perfected in love. That's it. And, and you, can still, you will still grow, 
you will still change, your soul will grow, you will continue to expand in your abilities and, and your perceptions and your understanding of knowledge, of truth, of, of everything, but you are definitely never going to be infinite. Because right. the universe that you're living in is not, as in, is not infinite. Do you understand? I know these are maybe tricky no, things. No, there's limitations to the universe. Yeah, well, God exists outside of the universe, mm. and probably uh, the universe is a part of God somehow. But, but, but the reality is that we cannot ever expand bigger than the universe itself. Otherwise, we'd have nowhere to live. You follow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The universe is your playground. Yeah, it's awesome. Mm. It is. This is. An inspiration to work towards. Yeah. Because perfection. Will if you, never you're, happen. you're not holding Perfection mind. will never happen as far as the world is concerned. Well, as far as my mum's concerned. As far as a new age belief is concerned, it is, it is impossible. And yet you're saying it is, and that is, that is inspirational. Yeah. So <laughs> true perfection is definitely possible. But not, it's not your definition of perfection, it's God's. Yeah, there's a long way to go. <laughs> God's definition of perfection. Thank you. Yep, no worries. Okay, not really related to the subject though. Was it? You talked about soul being perfect. No, but it's not related to the subject of your will. Felix, one last question. This is about. Uh, sorry, Mike. <laughs> this is this question is about. Um, you said uh, if if I make a, a choice. Can I, can I just stop you guys? I've had to remind the majority of you about your mic. In the first group, I had to remind nobody about their mic. What does that tell you? I don't know. Uh, it means that you're not conscious of loving other people. Does that make sense? This is a, definitely a problem in the group. So fire away, my friend. Okay, cheers. Um, you uh, made a, a, a comment about... Um, it's better to use, for someone to use their will firmly, even if it's out of harmony with love, than, than make it out of harmony with love, but it's just um, kind of wishy-washy. Now, two years ago, I made that step from, okay, I'll, I basically made a choice to try to get around my addiction, thinking it was good, and, you know, making those excuses. That's exactly what I did. And I thought it would lead me to more pleasure, but the loving choice would lead more, me to more pain. And I thought about it. I thought, no, AJ is wrong about this. It just, yeah. uh, and I, I thought about it, but good turned experiment. out I was wrong. The experiment was good. Yeah, turned out I was wrong. But yeah. so that was actually a, 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 a step forward to go from. Correct. From wishy washy, um, try to put it off, put it off, put it off, yeah. to go, no, I believe this, so I'll do this. Yes. And I'm pretty sure it'll turn out like that yeah because it, it, yeah, see okay. the advantage of doing that is quite simple and that is when you listen to my words if you in your heart don't believe them then what's the point of acting in harmony with my words yeah there's okay. no point you need to act in harmony with what you believe and then determine measure the results see this is where i see many going wrong is they act in harmony with what they believe and they never measure the result Okay. So I think it's very good, Felix, that you measured the result and you go, oh, yes, I, you know, I'm feeling now that maybe it's true. <laughs> you know? And then what, what, what has happened is your soul has learned. You go, ah. Oh. See, now you're not... See, every time I was talking to you two years ago or, or more, I could always feel the argument in your soul. In me? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's yeah. always like, no, I don't agree with that. No, I don't agree with that. No, I don't agree with that. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah and, and you were like that all the time. Now, you going off and engaging what you, did, you, what you thought was right and then learning that it was wrong is actually a lesson for your soul, which is actually a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 And, and this is where a lot of people are getting it wrong because they, they believe that just... Oh, if I just believe in my head what I feel in my heart completely different, I just believe in my head that he might be right and I go and do that, that I'm going to get a result. No, you're not going to get any result that you can yeah, measure yeah. because your heart feels completely the opposite. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I remember when I first, um, you know, looked at your teachings, I, I thought maybe, like, I was always going, bullshit this, bullshit that. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's constant. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, cheers, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I can feel every one of you who thinks everything's bullshit, that's for sure. <laughs> but, you know, again, if you do, live what you believe to be true and then measure, the key is measure the result. <laughs> Don't ignore the result, right? Yeah, so it's very important to do that. I can't continue anymore, We've, we're already behind. So what we'll do is we have now, now it's a 20 minute break. So if we can come back at uh, 1.35, we'll start at 1.35 if that's okay. We're just a little behind, so five minutes.